Hello, my freedom-loving friends. Welcome to 1984. Two plus two equals five. Men are women. Women aren't even women anymore. How dare they? They're taking uh, away opportunities from men who want to be women. Ah, <laughs> yes. It's amazed me. So I want to take a look at a, a story with you today for the purposes of, I think it's important to stay aware of these things so we can continue to have a voice of reason and say, look, two plus two actually equals four. If you feel unsafe with four, that's okay. Those are your feelings. Deal with them. But no matter how hysterical you get about two plus two equaling four, always has, always will. Fact, it doesn't equal five, no matter how hysterical you get. So <laughs> top story is a biological boy ran on the boys track team in high school last year, finished 72nd in the league. Okay, not gonna shame him. I probably wouldn't finish any better myself. This year, that boy is running as a girl. Awesome. And he's winning track meets. So from 72nd to first place, pretty big jump. Now, this is happening at Seattle Academy. You might hear my little boy crying. Trust me, he's being attended to. And he is a little boy. Uh, so this is happening at Seattle Academy. Seattle, shocker. Pretty interesting. Uh, uh, I want to hit some of the details with you that simply highlight how drastic of a difference there is between men's sports performance and women's sports performance. Doesn't mean women are worse as people. It means they're typically worse at sports. It's just a fact. It has to do with testosterone, muscle strength, muscle mass, bone density, biological facts. Two plus two equals four. Five is a cool number two. It really is, but it's not the same as four. Women are more awesome than men, probably in every other way, other than physical strength and athleticism. So the first thing, I wanna scroll down this article near the bottom. I think it has just a great, rich piece of human contribution to a dumpster fire. In August, an op-ed in the Washington Post authored by Alyssa Rosenberg, shout out, went as far as to argue that men and women's sports could actually be a good thing for young girls by teaching them the art of losing gracefully. <laughs> Hey, those girls that just got beat by a biological male, they seem upset. They're sore losers. We need more men in here competing against them because they're not very graceful with how they lose. They think there's something actually unjustified about it. We need to teach these loser women, poor sports, how to lose more gracefully. <laughs> Yeah, thank you for writing that article, Alyssa. Let's get into a couple of the fun details. Biological male track athlete is dominating girls cross country competition after deciding to identify as a female. Cool. It's an interesting decision. Not a biological reality, but it's an interesting decision. I identify as a dolphin right now, so give me some water. Though the athlete with Seattle Academy finished 72nd place as a freshman last year while running as a boy, why would he do that? Huh. The athlete has now reportedly claimed two victories as a 5,000 meter runner now that he identifies as a girl. Cool. Must have gotten to be a better athlete. Uh, the victories include a conference championship as well as three top two finishes and eight races this season. While competing as a boy, he never finished above 25th place in any given race. During the Washington Interscholastic uh, Activities Association state finals, what a dumb name. Could you make this race any longer? So, in a different race. On November 5th, the athlete reportedly placed 18th place with a time of 20 minutes, 31 seconds. If he were competing as a boy in that same race, his time would have put him in 145th place. Huh. 18th place as a girl. Same time equals 145th place as a boy. Why is that? Is that because 2 plus 2 equals 4, not 5? And four is different than five. That might be why. I don't know. We, we, we can't really. I mean, there's so much. I mean, with the, the climate change happening and the carbon emissions and, I mean, Ukraine for crying out loud. We can't really get to the bottom of why he would have finished 145th place in the boys race, but finished 18th place in the girls race. We don't know why. Humans are so intelligent 
that it's like they can make the intelligent decision, not an intelligent decision, they can use their intelligence to decide, I'm no longer going to use my intelligence. We're literally outsmarting ourselves as a species. In last year's Emerald South Conference Championship, the student, then a male, finished in 72nd place in the boys' division with a time of 2040. This year, not competing as a girl, finished in first place with a time of 19 minutes, 14 seconds, a school record. When does this stop? That's the question. I mean, we saw Leah Thomas, the women's NCAA champion swimmer, all last year, actually beginning of this year too, just pounding the crap out of all the women Leah competed against. Whereas when Leah was competing as a man in the college division, again, I don't know why she would have been competing as a man if she's a woman, but not even ranked. It was ranked. It was, it was maybe 400 something in the nation. I might be recalling that incorrectly, but it's ranked deep into the hundreds. So we, we saw this happen all over the place. We see many examples in high school athletics. I mean, a month ago, there was a volleyball team, I believe in North Carolina, could be wrong on that, but I think it was North Carolina, where a boy competing on the women's team, because two plus two equals five, spiked the ball so hard into an opposing girl's face, it really injured her. And then another school who was going to be competing against the team with the boy on the team forfeited the games. They said, this is actually dangerous. This guy is physically stronger than all the competitors. He brutally injured someone with a face head injury. We're going to forfeit the game. We're not going to compete against this person. So the question, where does this stop? I don't know, like, is the motivation for these dudes to say, like, dude, I, I want to compete on the girls team. Is it because they're like genuinely wanting to identify as a girl? Or is it more because they're like, hey, I, I wanna succeed in sports. Suck as a guy, but I can go from ranked sucked to first, as long as I just compete in the women's division. I don't know if that's their motivation, but that's part of the reality happening. And my biggest thing is, aside from the potential of injuries, now this story we're talking about is cross country, so you're not gonna injure other runners, but aside from injuries with biological males competing against girls and women, my other biggest concern is this literally takes away opportunities from actual girls who are competing in actual girls' sports whether it's the opportunity to place higher, the opportunity to win, the opportunity to get scholarships or with Leah Thomas, the opportunity to become a national champion. And we saw with the New Zealand weightlifter and the whatever last year's woke Olympics, biological male competing as a woman in women's weightlifting in New Zealand, that took away a woman's opportunity to be on the New Zealand Olympic team. I mean, that would be a big thing. So where does it end? What would stop us from like, hey, dude, like women's sports. So it goes like, dude, men's sports is hard. Women's sports is much easier. But bro, I ain't that athletic. Women's sports are still too competitive for me. Tell me about those children's sports. I can rank real low as a man, rank a bit higher as a woman, but dude, I could do the, all, I could be the all time greatest in children's sports. Or it's like, a, what would stop a person saying, dude, I identify as a dog. I wanna enter one of those dog agility contests you see on ESPN sometimes, gets like three viewers, don't know why they show them. But it's like, dude, I can run that obstacle course better than a poodle. Dude, I'm, I'm gonna win the dog championship. I think we have to have a basis in reality here. We all have our subjective, perspectives. That's great. That's part of what creates, well, creativity in humankind. We all have different perspectives. That's our subjective truth, not objective truth, because there is the objective truth. There's things we know. There's things we don't know. Mysteries of the universe. It's great. Maybe we'll eventually find them out. But there are certainly things we know that are objectively true. A male or a man, that's an adult male. A woman, that's an adult female. We know two plus two equals four. We know two plus two does not equal five. We know three plus two equals five. There's another way to do it too. You could do two plus three equals five. Like 
Same thing. There's no question, in my opinion, there's an assault on objective truth. There's propaganda trying to pave the way. There's intimidation to try to get people to consent to it. Try to intimidation to get people to shut their freaking mouths. Like, yeah, your daughter might have lost to a boy, but do you know what will happen to you if you speak up? So in my opinion, that's why we have courage. And that's why we have a voice. We have the courage to motivate our voice to say the truthful thing. And it's easy to say the truthful thing when it's an easy time. And it's hard sometimes to say the truthful thing when there's intimidation and potential backlashes and like automatic smears that come at you. Well, you're a hateful bigot if you think your daughter should only compete with women in the girls division. But that's why God gave us courage to say what's right, to stand for truth, even when it's hard. And I would even dare say, especially when it's hard. So that's today's story on a bi biological male competing in the Seattle Academy high school girls team ranked 72nd as a boy last year when she was competing as a boy and now ranked at times finishing first competing as a girl. Let me know what you think in the comments below. But before you go, I wanna give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Sheath, who makes the best underwear made for men. Take it away, Sheath. Oh, hey there. I wanna thank the sponsor of today's video, Sheath Underwear, the best underwear on the planet. I know this is true because Earth is the best planet in the solar system and Sheath is the best underwear on planet Earth. So, men, I wanna to talk to you for a second. Sheath makes it so you no longer have to wear ugly, uncomfortable underwear that degenerates your manhood. Instead, Sheath says, you deserve the most stylish designs and colors on the planet, made from the softest materials on the planet. And aside from that, based on what I'm seeing right now, Sheath also offers a dual pouch system to support your junk, like no other underwear on the planet. These are my newest pair, Blue Iceberg. And these are Orange Hexagon. And these are the Purple Geometric. My grandfather always said, son, life is too short to wear degenerated socialistic underwear that make you look ugly. You deserve to wear the best underwear on the planet, like a real American. And if you wanna tap into the American underwear dream like I do, just go to sheathunderwear.com slash awaken. And while you're there, use the discount code awaken for 20% off. Enjoy.